Autodesk Automatic Vault Custom Numbering can be applied to files in Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional and to items and change orders in Vault Professional. This article will concentrate on custom numbering schemes for file management and the use of these numbering schemes in Autodesk Inventor and inside the Vault itself. All graphics are taken from Autodesk Vault Professional 2018, so some may vary from Vault Workgroup. The process begins with the configuration of custom numbering schemes in the Vault client by a user with administrator rights. The configuration dialog is found under Tools, Administration, Vault Settings, Behaviors tab, under Numbering, touch the Define button. In the Numbering Schemes dialog box, you'll see in the upper left hand corner the different types of numbering schemes you can create. This is Vault Professional, so you can do a file, item, or change order numbering scheme. In Vault Workgroup, you will only be able to do file. We will use file in this demo. You can have as many numbering schemes as you desire. They will all be available for use as long as they're marked active. One must be marked default. When Autodesk Vault is installed, the sequential numbering scheme is created and marked as default automatically. Vault numbering schemes cannot be edited once they are used in the Vault, so it's very important to plan well. There is one field that you can change with the auto sequence number, but that is all. If you need to change a numbering scheme once it's been used, it will have to be marked inactive and recreated from scratch. I have created an example file naming scheme just to demonstrate the field types. It has not been used in the vault so I can completely edit it. The first field type is called fixed text. It requires a name and the text which will automatically be applied to every vault number. The next one is a delimiter. A delimiter can be any character on the keyboard including a space. The next one is free text. Very similar to fixed text except you can change it at will during the number creation. You can put a default value in and enforce a length. Predefined list. Predefined list is probably one of the most valuable ones. You can put a code in and a description. These codes will appear and the description beside them when the vault numbering system is used. One must be marked as default. The auto generating sequence number is the only field that can be edited after the vault numbering scheme has been used. It requires a name and a maximum length of characters. Since you can edit it, this number is not critical. You could change it later to increase your number sequence. Some people like to start at different ranges, so I'm starting at 100 and going to 9999. Step size is set, and you can also pad with zeros to fill out the number. One last one, which I am not using, is called workgroup label. If your vault is replicated, each workgroup will have a different designation label. This can be applied to the vault numbering scheme. Notice the preview of your, if you finally assemble all your fields. If you find the order is wrong, you can move the up and down buttons to rearrange them. At the bottom of the dialog is a very important field to force everything to uppercase in case someone accidentally enters a lowercase value. Once you're finished, hit OK close and close your vault settings. You're now ready to use a numbering system. Moving into Autodesk Inventor, let's try out our naming schemes. It is very essential that you be logged into the vault to make the schemes work. The naming scheme will come up during a save or a save as. I'll be using save as since this is a pre-done part. In the generate file numbering box you'll see that your default 
scheme is being displayed, you can also hit the drop down box and pick any other that you have defined. This one consists of a drop down list, my code and my description, and a sequence number. I must point out here that once a sequence number is assigned, it cannot be reused. In case you delete a file in the vault, you must use a new number. There is a skip button which allows you to name the file manually. Going back to save as again, I'm going to say OK. Notice the number has been assigned. I'm going to place it in my folder of my choice, just like normal. One thing to point out that this number is just like any other file name. It's automatically been assigned to the part number. Moving to an assembly, this is our predefined assembly. So I'm going to go to save as again. Some people like to use a different numbering scheme for their assemblies. That's up to you. I'm using the same one going to the same location. Place it in the folder of my choice, and the name is automatic. Again, I want to point out that the part number is automatically assigned as normal. Moving to a drawing of this, if I create a drawing, and I go to save it, notice that the numbering scheme does not come up because it's using the same number as the assembly. So during drawing saves and presentation file saves, the vault naming scheme is not activated. Using custom content center parts brings up a new issue, which can easily be solved. If I place a custom content center part, piece of steel that's 10 inches long, as custom, the naming scheme will come up. I say OK, place it in my assembly, and you'll see that the part number comes in as from the table. If this is not desired, the quick fix is to do the following. Go into the Custom Content Center Library, add the file table, go to the part number, and modify it to go right to blank instead of the part number. Publish it back out. And now if you place a part from the custom contents in a library, as custom, the numbering comes in, <clears throat> place it. Now in the part, you'll see that the part number is the actual vault number. Another special case comes up when you're using the frame generator application. I have my assembly already saved, my skeleton in place. I'll go to design and pick insert frame. From a standard ANSI library, I'm going to place three by three by quarter members. Now down at the bottom, you'll see this icon. It says if you check it, you'll get the part number from the library. If you uncheck it, you're going to get the vault numbering system. It's up to you. Pick on the numbers, the member skeleton, say OK. Now for the name of the skeleton and the frame, you can use a numbering system from the vault or you can skip it totally. I am. Now each member, you can change its location. I'm going to change all these. You can check a new system if you wanted to, 
or individually is up to you. Say OK. Now checking each member. I'll just check one. You'll see that the properties pick up the actual numbering system from the vault, not the part number from the library. Other vault environments will bring up the vault naming scheme system, such as cable and harness. If I pick cable and harness, you'll see in this named assembly, and it's already been done, it's now asking me to name the cable harness from my naming schemes. As you can see now, the name has been entered. I'll leave the cable and harness and go into tube and pipe environment. In this one, it's first of all naming the tube and pipe overall assembly and then the run. Again, just like in frame generator, you can pick the naming scheme for all of them or individually and configure them as you see fit. It plugs it right in. Let's now move into the Vault Client and show you the two main areas where Vault Naming Scheme can be applied. The first one is the Rename tool. If I pick on this assembly and three associated parts, right click and pick Rename. I don't need to add any more files. Go to the next screen. I can pick the naming scheme I want to use from the list. I will use my standard one and close it. Now you notice the new naming scheme can also be configured from here to any of the scheme options. You can also update the part number with the new name if you so desire. When I finish it updates the files and applies a new vault naming scheme. Close that and you can see they're all been changed. Another operation you can use the vault naming schemes in in the vault client is copy design. I'll click on this assembly and right click and say copy design. First thing you want to check in the drop down is to be sure your name, numbering scheme is available. I have the option to show different naming schemes and which ones default. I can have more than one if I want. Next thing you want to be sure of is to be sure that you're seeing the numbering panel. I will pick the top level assembly and the base to make a new design. I'll copy these to a folder I've already chosen called New Base Design. Now, under the numbering scheme panel, I have my two different numbering schemes available. And I'll pick on the one I want to use, and then I can configure anything that the scheme allows. When I execute the copy design, the new files will have the new naming scheme. Going to the new folder, as you can see the files came across, including the associated drawings. Thank you very much for watching.